the Louis J. Robert Show, SEPS building on the University of Moncton campus, live on Cable 10. It's the 13th annual Irving Oil Hoop Classic. The uh, setup this afternoon, Norville is going to, I think, see that Timmons is going to want to play this game at a very controlled pace. The game gets up over 80, 85 points. I don't think Coach Hugh Meyer is going to be very happy. He'd love to see the game under 40 points at halftime. Uh, and if the game gets much over 40, he's going to be disappointed. We've got the baby up here with us now. Maybe we can get a shot of that. Bring it over here. We'll get a shot of that. The, uh, Bring the camera over here. This is the only time we ever get to hold a trophy like this. We're going to get a camera to zoom in on us here. That's referees Ian Fowler and Scott Wood talking to the respective captains about tournament rules, tournament protocol, what's expected of them over the Brian, course of the Brian, put your hand on top of that basketball. We That's as close as you ever got to a real basketball. We the championship the trophy for the Irving Oil Hoop here, Classic. Norville, let's try something here. Which one is me and which one is the trophy? That's me on the left. The guy needs help. Actually, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. 1985-86, Queen Elizabeth High School. They're a two-time champion. Halifax West in 84 and 89, two-time champion. Timmins in 92 and 93, two-time champions. And that's it for two-time champions. So we're talking about a team that has a Somebody. shot at... Winning. Somebody is going to establish a new tradition of excellence today. I feel like uh, uh, Jim Nance when he has the NCAA yeah. championship yeah. trophy. I got to admit, it's been hurt for the last few years not having my Hoosiers. Somebody is going to show pride and poise today. Yeah. Here, we'll, here. here there's the three of us. Three of the Stooges. How do we look? That's me on the left. Showing the Irving last year's Oil champion Hoop right over here, Tony High School. Irving Oil Hoop Classic, Moncton, New Brunswick. What a great trophy. Nice basketball. Another part of the tradition. Showing the back of the trophy with all the... Uh, here, here are previous year's winners on the back side of the trophy. We can get... Uh, a we little can, later, maybe we can, not. We can get an angle here and look at all the uh, championship uh, winners over the course. There's Frederick and High in 83, Halifax West, Queen Elizabeth twice and now trying for the third time kv twice in a row in 87 and 88 joey walker big part of those teams uh 89 and 90 halifax west and cole harbor 89 of course the year will nujuku was not here but they managed to win the tournament anyway and over on this side we've got the winners starting in 91 uh vaughn secondary won that tournament in 91 timmons in 92 and 93 of course and we've seen the uh, Coney plaque on the front side. Who's going to get their name on the other side of the front portion of the trophy opposite Coney winning this tournament in 1995? We'll know in about two hours. It's either going to be a three-time winner from Timmins, Ontario, or a three-time winner from Halifax, Nova Scotia, the Queen Elizabeth High School Lions. Hugh Meyer taking a moment with uh, just a minute and a half left. Maybe to we can go his into his. I know he's together. got his mic on. Let's just see if let's, we can get in there. Let's see what Coach Meyer's talking to his kids about prior to game time, if we can get that mic turned on. Okay. Now, we're in one and four on the score. That's easy, eh? One and four on the score. And we're in a five say on transition. Nine. 1-4. Okay, those are two guys. Now, um, everybody else is active, active, in and out, in and out. You're sagging, you're helping, but you're in and out. I got the same. Sorry? The, the two man, sorry, the guy on the top here? Right in here. Okay. Remember? At the beginning, when the ball is up here, we're trying to we're, we're going to pick it up at center on the one and four. Pick a side, okay. Now we get it influenced. This guy's dropping into here, and we're into ten, the regular ten, okay. One thirty-one modified. Okay, again, same thing, but below here, we're influencing, okay. 
And on that one, when we come out of it, these guys are looking after their regular position, but this guy is looking after here to here. Right? This guy's dropping this side all the time, but he's responsible for coming out. It's a deep guy. So one, one, three, thirteen into a ten modified. This is what we're doing. Okay. of Waterloo things are going to stand up until uh, until they score a hundred. <laughs> oh, I know. You just want to get in more often. <laughs> starting lineups, starting with the Queen Elizabeth Lions. There's the man who won the, uh, uh, who was reported to have won the slam dunk and <laughs> didn't, as a matter of fact. That's Nelson Carberry. There's the man who did win it. Jordan Croucher, Steve Nelson, the captain, whose defense is going to be an important part of today's game. What a good crowd. Here come your Timmins High School Blues. Joe Gacy's the first player out. Number 14 is Willie Carey. There's 22, Tev Trevor Dunbabin. 24, Dale Boubry. Good <laughs> two break. And number 40, Derek Terrio. Big game last night from Terrio. I think he had 33, Norval. Oh, wonder. I mean, if Tony, you, you mentioned last night about John Kreiner coming in here and you're really not noticing him the first year he was here. And uh, this Terrio was just like that. Didn't say he didn't notice him the first year he was here. Didn't notice him the first two or three games. He didn't notice him until the semifinals. Oh, okay. In the interest of journalistic yeah, uh, we, accuracy. The way people are getting sued nowadays, I'm You're sure. number one. <laughs> the worst part of this game, Norval, is taking the heckling from the peanut gallery behind us. <laughs> Here we go. The championship game is Timmons underway. has got the ball to start off. So that means QEH should get the first alternating possession. <laughs> yeah, you're going to keep going. That's what our statistician should to. keep, just to keep an accurate uh, record of that. Whoa, can't touch. Hugh Meyer back in his full UNB regalia today. Wearing the black and red of the Varsity Reds. Now let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to be in. Uh, Ooh, don't be surprised. To see. <laughs> well, these, these don't defenses that he put. Boom, oh. he hit that last that was night and is going to hit it again layout. today. Jonah Tossig hits the first hoop of the game, and it's 3-0 for Queen Elizabeth. He uh, knocked uh, that left-handed Jay down a lot That's last That's interesting. Night. They're just going to let the pressure, and then it backed right off as soon as they got the ball in. Low post. A run and flex. That's just not the way they want to see this game nope. start. Not the way Timmons wanted to start it. Queenie may have arrived at another level, maybe, just to, they've maybe heard our comments, or my comments, I guess. Timmons breaks the goose egg after a minute and 14 seconds. 5-2, Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, a relatively young team, Norville. A lot of grade 10s and 11s play on this team. Jonah Tossig and uh, Steve Nelson, the captains, are the only grade 12s who get a lot of time. Interesting to see how they handle the pressure of a championship game. Well, they may want to be champions just so they can all come back again next Some year. Of these kids are uh, very young, grade tens. Mike Tanner and his kids have had a good week. They've played extremely well, but I also know from talking to Coach Tanner, they've really enjoyed the week, and his uh, young men have enjoyed the tournament. Kerry's not going to enjoy the call on that one because he's been charged with a block, and we're going to see a uh, two-shot foul shot for Queen Elizabeth. Coach Tim, uh, coach of the Timmins uh, Blues, Hugh Meyer, wants a timeout to talk to his kids down 7-2 after only two minutes. Let's see what Coach Meyer's got to say if we can get into his timeout. Are we totally asleep? 
We didn't do one thing yet that I've asked you to do. Not one thing. He shouldn't have the ball, let alone a shot. Trevor Nine shouldn't have an open shot with you out on him. We pinched the blocks at the beginning. Remember, not out here. And we haven't run either of the offensive plays. And when we did it, we got two layups and didn't put them in. Now let's set up here. I don't want to be behind 15 points before dawn breaks. Comprends? Set up the press break. We're going to run a 12 again, and we're going to uh, and we're going to run it right this time. And you're going to get the boards, and you're going to get back and play defense. And it's a five sag on defense. Ready? One, two, three. Blue. Well, calm and composed timeout, though. Yeah, Just exactly. a little more emotion than we normally see at a coach. Who He's got a message. He doesn't need to beat on anybody, but uh, guys, this is the way it's going to be. Correlator delivered it. Steve Nelson at the line for two. Puts them up 8-2. Queen Elizabeth, the Lions up 8-2 with 18.06 uh, to go in the first half. Smooth as ice. Case has done a good job at the point all week for Timmons. Yes. He's there very he quick. Terry out. And there's a guy whose game last night was the difference. 33 points in the semifinal win over St. Malachy's. Winner of the Brian Forbes lookalike socks. He's not very happy, Coach. Hugh Meyer. Ooh. Wacko. Oh. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> Pinball game yeah, exactly. right here now. Yeah. Nice finish. Jonah Tossig's 10 is Queenie his up. fifth point of the game, I believe. Never saw a baseline last night, did we? Uh, no, no. It's unusual to see Terrio in there on the base. <laughs> well, he's changed his game a little bit today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Halifax seems surprised. Boom, Smooth nice job. Jumper. The young man who won the, the uh, slam dunk competition on Thursday night can also shoot baseline jumpers. Thirteen six up by seven, uh, Queen Elizabeth. Nice off. lick off. Yeah. yeah, nice pass off. It's 15 6, and uh, Queenie right now is in uh, pretty much getting what they want to get. Mm hmm. We're going to see another timeout here in a minute from Hugh Meyer, I'm sure. Terrio goes to the base. Foul called before the shot, so the hoop won't count, but that'll allow Timmons to get uh, Kevin Lorimer into the game. Dale Dubroy goes to the bench. Yeah, it was Obviously going to go to three. Oh, no, they're going to move. That moves uh, Carey up to the wing, I yeah, guess. Coach uh, Meyer wasn't very pleased. Nice, nice job to keep the ball alive. And again to keep the ball alive. Ooh. Nelson's pretty quick with that ball, and Ian McCray, I think that's his first two for the game. We're going down to coach uh, Mike Tanner's timeout. Let's hear what Tanner's got to say at his timeout with a 17 6. Sit down, sit down. 
Okay, now, box on the boards. We've got you and 32. We've got you and 12, right? Okay, you've got, uh, you've got, you've got, you've got 40. Uh, on the offense? I got a... Yeah. You've got 24 yeah. or 22? You've got 22. No, 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 no. I, I had this. He came off. He got okay. 14. I had 14. 14. Said yeah. Said you said you're down low on the offense? Okay, yeah, quiet. Quiet. All right, now, what are we doing right? Everything. Okay. We're moving our, we're moving the ball well. We're, we're, now, we're, we're, we're letting them beat his baseline. We're not getting any good, uh, we're not getting any reversal help, okay? Yeah. So let's uh, fan them inside because they're moving everybody up. So fan everybody to the middle. Okay, help to the middle. Now, move the ball around an offense. Like I said, anytime you want to get over it, run your man off the screen and pop out. Okay. But don't go out of our offense just because they're doing something special. Okay, we run, you're running the ball real, court real well. Let's run and get into flow right away. That's our game, run and flow. Come on, pass. Go. One, two, three, one, two, three. Run and flow is their game, all right. Uh, Coach Meyer said in his previous timeout he didn't want to get down 15. Well, he, he's down 11. And we're only uh, five minutes into the game. Yeah, he's uh, some good things got to happen for Timmons, or they're going to get run right out of the gym. Yeah, 17-6, and uh, three or four possessions here are going to be critical both ways. I'll tell you, they, they're. Ooh. Dunbabin tries to get the clean rejection and cannot. And Tossig will go to the line to shoot two. That's the first on Dunbabin and the second on the team, I think. Tossig at the line with five points to shoot two. See lots of paper airplanes being made right now. Look of course, around. that's the uh, halftime uh, show today, the chance to throw a paper airplane into a bin at center court from outside the uh, court with a chance to travel, I think, to Boston to see the Celtics play. The way the Celtics are playing this year, you might want to decline the penalty. You can get seats this year, though, at a good price. Well, the problem is with the new fleet center, even though they're not playing great basketball, the uh, ticket prices are... Pretty steep. Pick cleanly by Tossig, who's going to toss it down. Tossig is 21 to six, and she ain't pretty. No. 21 6, 14 10 to go. Steve Nelson's defense, big part of the game last night for... What was uh, my early prediction? 23, 27, yeah. <laughs> or three? There's a three off the wing from Willie Carey. 21-9, <laughs> they're going to fight, fight, fight. Uh, one, three, one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... Nice battle in on the boards. Dunbarbin picks up another board. Yeah. Got a couple at the offensive end. Now gets a good one at the defensive end. Can get it back to uh, to 10 if they could hit this. Get themselves two out of this. Lots of help in there, and uh, Jordan Croucher comes away with the board. They are so quick. Yes. Tim is trying to force him to play half-court offense. And it ain't working. Nice inside. Carvery gets two, and the whack from uh, Carey, he'll go to the line with a 14 point QEH lead after only seven minutes of play. Chance to go up by 15. Dale DeBroy back in for Trevor Dunbabin. Twenty-three nine. Thirteen oh two to go, and definitely not a situation Timmons wanted to have arise. Carvery scores one. He's got five. Leading scorer right now. Uh, Tossig has nine for QEH, and Derek Terrio has four of the nine Timmons points. 
Only four baskets scored by Timmons. Three twos and a three. Carey's hit two in a row. He's got five. Good thing. 24-11. Probably a close one over the back call, but no call. See, it makes you stretch that defense out the way these guys can fire the three, doesn't it? Fire the three, rebound, handle a dribble. Run. Okay, sorry. Jordan Croucher hits for two. Croucher's a kid who's only in grade 11, I think. And, uh, man, he's played well. Yeah, you're right. He's had a real good tournament. And these guys don't give up on the defensive end either. You're used to these uh, gunners who can't play in their own end. And these guys can shoot and dribble and cut, and uh, they don't do a bad job defensively. They made uh, pretty quick work of a couple of pretty solid teams this week. Yes, yeah. Nice hoop. Turnaround by Sean Carberry. Carey's got eight, and it's a darn good thing, 28-14. High scoring game again. We're on a we're on a way to about 125. Steve Nelson can't hit the three. I think you might want to work carry out in the wing, guys. He's hit uh, three shots in a row, two threes and a two. Lormer gets it to the hoop and can't count it. He'll shoot two with a chance to cut the lead to 12. Coach Tanner wants a timeout. Let's go down and hear what he's got to say to his kids. Here's Mike Tanner in his Queen Elizabeth High School Lions timeout. Sit down here, guys. You're off, yeah. You're, uh, Stevie, we're rotating here. Listen, he, who's got two? Uh, that's okay. The reason you got two fouls is you're... you're, you're uh, you're, everybody's beating the uh, baseline. We you jump inside and turn them inside? Get to the, the outside of them, all right? Force them to the middle. Be they're beating you guys like, like, like a uh, hut, uh, hut knife through butter. <laughs> Seriously, if they're making a ball fake, they're going around you. Uh, no one's going, no, it's all one. No one is helping out at all. And you're, you're getting beat on the same move every time. You've got to fight through the screens a lot quicker when 14's the yeah. guy you're guarding, because he's the, he's the shooter. Yeah, that's my OK? Now, you've got to get over it. earlier to help or let him go. You've got to force him baseline. Do you understand what I mean? You have to force, force him inside, away from the baseline. So jump on his bottom shoulder. Now do it. Don't tell me you're going to do it. Do it. Everybody, let's go. Hunting knife through butter. Yeah, what's, uh, what's, yeah, that's a very sharp knife, I might add. What's, is that a metaphor or a simile? Like a raz is a simile. Like a hot knife through butter is a, that's a simile. Mike. Tanner may be an English teacher at Queen Elizabeth High School. We'll have to talk to him afterwards about whether that was a similar uh, I think we'll just enjoy the fact that he came out of that with the, from the middle of nowhere. That's yeah. a Brian Forbes line if I ever heard one. Like a hot knife through butter. Some new kids in to get some minutes here for uh, QEH up 13. Timmons got a sub in too. And the new kid can shoot. Saul Hoffman hits his first shot of the afternoon and the lead is up to 16.
Ooh, nice Count finish. It. Ooh, nice job. Lorimer had a good quick first step, good quick second step, and then that third step was pretty good and quick. Thirty-one seventeen, nine forty-nine to go. Thirty-one eighteen, nine forty-eight to go. Tossick throws That's in another uh, turn. He could play handball the way he's shooting it so far away. He's got 12. 34, 18. Up by 16. Nice job to get the ball cross court, but they can't score it. Jordan Croucher expressing his disappointment with the foul call. That's his second, he'll sit. Steve Nelson back in to play some defense for Coach Tanner. One Carvery off, the other one's gonna stay on and Tossig's gonna park it for a few minutes as well. One of two. 34 19, 9 12 to go. Queenie with the ball. 34 points after just virtually 10 minutes. This is uh, quite an walk. offensive performance. Walk twice. Must not have had any control. Who says two wrongs don't make a right? Nice board. Mm -hmm. Now there's the kind of job yeah. offensively that Timmons did last night that they haven't yes. done so far today. They were getting those offensive And they boards. were finishing though. They haven't finished today. Coach Tom King made the uh, comment, uh, Norville, when he and I were talking after that uh, bronze medal game. He said that uh, last night it was his observation that Timmons every time down the floor either scored or got the offensive board. He said that we weren't able to do anything at any time to shoot, uh, to shut down their shooting or to take away the offensive boards. And he said, when you're at the offensive end and those two things are happening, uh, how are things gonna go wrong for you? Got some uh, interesting uh, Pizza Hut trivia coming up here. You'll wanna get your dialing fingers ready, folks, at uh, 855, uh, let's guess it's 9168. Dial that and see who answers. <laughs> 855 I heard David on call for me to 386 3001. That's what I heard. 855 6891 is our Pizza Hut trivia number, and we've got a good one for you coming up here in just a minute. Up by 16. We'd like to say hello to everybody who's at home watching this tournament who hasn't been able to get out over the week. Uh, I've had a number of people express to me over the last couple of years, Norville, how much they enjoy this tournament and some uh, older folks and people who perhaps have physical frailties who aren't able to get out to the gym and enjoy the games. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We're glad to have you with us. We hope you've enjoyed the week and that you enjoy the rest of this one today. Nice cut, cut a finish. Hard to handle speed, isn't it? Whoever said speed kills had been there oh. and survived, apparently. Jacques Villeneuve needs to be here. Keep up this pace. 855-6891, and coming at you soon is our second, our first half trivia for the second game of the day. 
Pizza Hut, nothing but. There's another one. Boom. Steve Taylor plays defense and shoots threes. He can play for me. Has he, has he weak side board, though? I think I said Steve Taylor. It's Steve Nelson. Steve Taylor and I played high school football together. I used Kendall Scott's name the other night when I meant Kendall uh, Summers. Now Steve Taylor when I meant Steve Nelson. Now the good uh, thing is your memory's still working because you remember your mistakes. I haven't seen Steve Taylor in 20 years. 39-21, up by 18. That's uh, true. 6.46 to go. It's not necessarily a sign of dementia to make mistakes. It's a sign of dementia to make mistakes and not be able to explain how they came about. That's is right. that what you're telling That's me? That's fairly close. And dementia is exactly the word I'm thinking about. Dementia are us. Timmins, Ontario, famous for two exports. One of them high school basketball players. The second of them country and western singers. We want to know the name of the hot property in country and western music, not just in Canada, but around the world, who hails from Timmins, Ontario. If you're a multifaceted individual, as Norval and I purport to be, you'll know the name of this young lady. You'll give us a call and win a 14-inch pepperoni stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut for your knowledge and insight into the world of music. Give us a call at 855-6891. If you know the internationally acclaimed country and western star hailing from Timmins, Ontario. We know the names of the Timmins Blues. Who th sings country and western out of Timmins? Oh, look. We haven't seen many of those turnovers today, Norval. Oh. Thirty-nine twenty-one with five fifty-seven to go. Timmins with the ball and uh, Timmins down. We've by got a winner. Somebody is multifaceted out there. Terry Ricker at Foundry Street, eighty-five Foundry Street, is multifaceted. Norval. Do you want to get the right name? It's Shania Twain, okay. Mark's daughter. I'm a country and western kind of guy. I'm a musical kind of guy, Norval. Congratulations to Terry Ricker at 85 Foundry Street. We'll be in touch shortly after the tournament to get you your 14-inch stuffed crust pepperoni pizza from Pizza Hut on Mountain Road and Paul Street, India. Good board. Shania Twain, that's... Uh, Shania O'Connor? No. 39 21, 527 to go. Alana Morissette, the other hot Canadian <laughs> musician out of Ottawa, Ontario. Nobody here from Ottawa this year, so we didn't have a chance to use that question. Only and it wouldn't be right to Ottawa. Cross over. Name the team from Ottawa that was here. Uh, the Ottawa Senators. Only no? one team related to coach was Barry, Perry Kakonan's brother. What was the name of that school? The only school we've ever had here from Ottawa. I think it was the Senators. Now they played like the Senators. <laughs> Perry, don't ever tell him that Norville said that. Well, they did that week, and Perry will admit it. Well, good things are happening in this first half, Norville, if you're a Queen Elizabeth High School Lion fan or alumni. And if you're a Timmins High School Blues fan or alumni, you would just as soon have spent the last 40 minutes doing your laundry. Good jumper from Terrio. He gets inside along yeah. the baseline, but he shows us a different move there with the 12-foot jumper. It's back to 16. It'd be nice to see them get a little run. Get it down to a... Uh, a dozen or ten, maybe eight, if by half. There's Nelson again, his second three. He's got eight on the game. Two threes and a couple of foul shots. 
Yeah, those don't help a whole lot, do they? Hit those things. Nice job. DeBroy gets to the uh, backboard with a nice little show of the ball and a down and under. Forty-two twenty-five, three forty-five to go. Oh, gee. Oh, that's a tough one. You run the clock down that yeah. low and then get a bounce off a defender's hand to uh, the yeah. backboard. Back to 19. A lot of heart break going around this afternoon for the Timmins Blues. Starting to look like a country and western song. I don't think it's called country and western anymore. It's called country, isn't it? Boom. Yeah. At least Columbia Record House does, and they don't sell records anyway. 44 27, 258 to go, uh, 17. Want to think about some tournament all stars out of this game, Norman? Nope, don't do it. There's you know two how, of them right there. You know how I look at tournament all stars, just like I do the slam dunk. Exactly, it's not part of the game. Yeah. This is a team game. Individual success should not be rewarded. I agree with you. Gasis, nice job to dish. And as has been the case all afternoon, Timmons can't convert. I'm going to say Steve Taylor is a uh, tournament all-star. Uh, probably uh, 24, our slam dunk winner is an all-star. That would be... Uh, Jordan Croucher, uh, probably Terrio on the basis of last night's performance. Tossig's played well all week for QEH. Forty-four, twenty-nine. It's down to fifteen now. It'd be nice to, like I said, this seems like they can't break that invisible barrier. The glass ceiling. Inside position for Carvery gets inside Ontario and scores it. So they missed the jumper, but no rebound position to pick it up. We've got a minute and fifty seconds left in the first half. Good job by Gasis. If you remember, Norville, yesterday morning, this is just about what happened in the first half. QEH jumped out to a 20-point first-half lead. Uh, Timmins came back and won the second half by three, lost the game by 17. And the fact they came as close to QEH as they did was what mattered in the point. Uh, uh, no, I got that wrong, because Queen Elizabeth finished first in their division. So never mind what I just said, but uh, it was 20 it's points. How much at we half listen to you. Yeah, how would we change that? We that? To anyway. How would we change that? Yeah. So 20 points at the half and three-point second half uh, advantage for Timmins resulted in a 17-point loss. 46-31, 120 to go. Timmins with the ball. Tossig finds it again. That left-handed jumper. People are surprised by that jumper because they're they're used to people coming up with their right. <laughs> and uh, I, I would like. I agree. I'd like to see the shooting percentages for the half. <laughs> it was like Timmins shot the ball last night. We're seeing Queen E shoot it today. Forty-eight thirty-one. 
Nice finish. 48-33. Chance to cut it to 14. That's a nice strong hoop, you know. Nice strong left-handed yes, hoop. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Step under. Yes, it was. John Lake's first basket of the afternoon. He's got three. And Queen Elizabeth has a 14-point lead. They've got uh, 25 seconds of clock to run here. They'll probably look to score one more time by halftime. Try and take that 16 or 17-point lead into the uh, halftime. Can't get it, but ooh. ooh. Nelson does it again and gets to a 16-point Queen Elizabeth lead at halftime. Timmons down 16. Coach Meyer is going to want to talk to his kids. 16 points, not insurmountable, but uh, certainly not the situation that Hugh Meyer would want at halftime, is it? Nope. 50 to 34 is the halftime score. 16 points down, but you say he was down by 20 or 20-some. to have one let's get, let's get nice. that here we go here's the camera angle that we want so people can see this rain of paper three trees have died Norville so that we can have this contest today a veritable plethora of oh paper. I saw a few go in we there. got a bunch yep holy cow look at that paper Well, that was fun, Norval. We're going to have, uh, let's see who our winner is here before we get away, and then we'll take a little break and come back and regroup for the second half of today's championship match. Dan Rowan, the, uh, going to draw the lucky winner here from CKCW CFQM. He's going to go deep down into that barrel and pick one up, and he has picked a winner for us, somebody who's going to travel free, courtesy of the sponsors of this tournament. We've got a winner. Who that guy? They won last year. Who, who was it who won? Oh. Justin Craig, there's the winner. <laughs> two years in a row, two years in a row, Norval says, the same family has won. And is, oh, 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 oh that, is that Sean's? Quite obviously, we had it set up so somebody from yeah, Trimble exactly. would win. Yeah. <laughs> so our trivia winner last night has his son play so well for Harrison Trimble all week. His second son win today's uh, uh, airplane toss. And the Craig family's got to be happy to be part of the uh, <laughs> Irving maybe. Oil Hoop Classic. Uh, they'd like this tournament to run six or seven times a year. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go away for a couple of minutes, clean up some paper, get organized for the second half, and be back with the second half of today's championship game of the Irving Oil Hoop Classic. Live from SEPS and the University of Moncton, it's the Irving Oil Hoop Classic for 1995. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
Well, we're back with the second half of today's championship game of the Irving Oil Hoop Classic, the 13th annual from SEPS on the University of Moncton campus. We uh, have halftime statistics here, Norval, and it's interesting to see the uh, point distribution for QEH. Jonah Tossig with 14 points, Steve Nelson with 12. The big shooter in the last couple of games, uh, Jordan Croucher's only scored six, but he's only had to score six with the two seniors, Nelson and Tossig, coming up so big in the first half. 26 points and Timmons, uh, from those two players, and Timmons only scored 34. For Timmons, Will Carey hit two threes and a two. He's got eight. Dale DeBroy has five points. Kevin Lorimer has six off the bench. Derek Terrio has three twos. He's got six points. So the, uh, the point distribution that uh, Queen Elizabeth has managed to accomplish, they've got uh, a couple of kids with 12 and 14 points. Timmons with nobody having scored more than the eight that Will Carey's got. No surprise really then that QEH is up 50 to 34 at halftime. With the 16-point uh, deficit, Coach Hugh Meyer is not out of this game by any stretch of imagination, but a team that can score like uh, QEH can, a team that runs the floor like QEH can, a team that passes as well as they do, pretty tough job to come back from a 16-point deficit. I think they were down 17, uh, they were down 20 yesterday and managed to win the second half, but that was small consolation as uh, QEH picked up the 17-point win. Uh, no question that uh, Timmons uh, didn't have the first half that they were hoping to have there. Uh, their, you know, too many transition bats. 50 points is too many points to have scored against you against with Queenie. Uh, well, they're we, gonna, we they're on their way to over 100. We they did slow them down, though. They had 33 uh, 10 minutes into the uh, right. half. Well, we mentioned before the game that if Timmons could keep uh, QEH under 40, they'd probably be happy. And at 50, I don't think they are very happy, particularly when uh, the 50 is offset by only 34 at the other side of the scoreboard. We uh, hope everybody will want to stay around after the championship game to see the awards presentation, the championship trophy that we uh, displayed before the game presented, the uh, tournament all-stars selected, the uh, scholarship awards presented, uh, numerous other prizes and awards from the uh, sponsors whose contribution to this tournament is so highly valued by the organizing committee and respected by the players and participants in the tournament. And we'll want you to stay with us for what we hope will be about a 20 or 25 minute celebration of the tournament after it's over before we uh, say goodbye for another Irving Oil Hoop Classic and invite you back to see us again in 1996. With uh, just a little over three minutes to go before the second half, let's take a minute to go away and uh, see what's in the refrigerator. Perhaps you'll find a Riverdale Cola or a Riverdale Natural Spring Water. We'll have you back here in about a minute to set up the last two minutes before the second half of the 13th annual Irving Oil Hoop Classic live from SEPS on the University of Moncton campus in Moncton, New Broomstick. We'll be right back after these words. its 50-year commitment to the United Nations. My husband used to exude confidence. Now he's plagued by anxiety and fear. He used to delight in the simplest pleasures. Now he can't perform the simplest tasks. His face used to light up when he saw me. Now he's not always sure who I am. But then I barely recognize him anymore. My husband is 55, and he's been stolen from me. But there is help, and there is hope. Support development work in Africa? I can't. I already have too much to worry about. I would, if I really believed it would make a difference. I'd like to, but there are too many problems. I can't. Even if you I saw it once, would. Support really development work. USC Canada thinks you can. Not only can, but we've got to. I'm Bruce Coburn, urging you to play your part. Support USC Canada's work with people in developing countries. That's USC Canada, 56 Spark Street, Ottawa.
50 to 34, and there's 58 seconds to go in halftime. We're all set. Uh, Timmins down by 16. Uh, first four or five possessions going to be critical for Timmins. They've got to uh, stop Queenie and score a few points themselves, get it back to 12 or so if they can, 12 or 10. They got to nick away, away at that lead. Yeah, chip away. Chip away, chip away. What was the name of the Ottawa team, big fella? Don't know. That's why I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody knows that. They can call us in and tell yeah, us. Yeah, call us in. Perry, and we'll, call yeah, us. What was the yeah. name of your brother's school? Somebody call us and tell us who the Ottawa school was. It was Bishop Monsignor, Dr. Chief Senator something, wasn't it? Moses Malone. It was yeah, a uh, senator, somebody. Well, it had something to do with Ottawa. It must be yeah, a senator. There'd, I, be it, a, it was a, there'd be a government job involved yeah. somehow. It's, uh, if, yeah, call us in simply because we're looking to be, to connect with our audience. We want to be one with the people who make this show work. You, the little people out there, are what make this show work. <laughs> I kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're, we're ready, ready to, to go for the second half, just in time, some might say. A lot of people saying thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, and thank you. Next year in Orville, are you going to do this with Brian? <laughs> yes. Fatigue's Master. a factor in the media business, you know, people. Well, I can tell you, this, it's so much different not having the uh, three minute, the two minutes of commercials every four minutes. Uh, like three it is minute watching. warning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my wife says it takes the last two minutes of a, of a football game, it takes like half an hour to play. Here come the Queen Elizabeth High School Lions. Oh, nice tip. That's uh, Nelson adding to his offensive rebound count. He got three. That's Hurt his scoring percentage, only hitting one for three, but helped his offensive rebound count. Well, it depends if the shot chart people were that quick with their pens. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Carvery for two. 54-34, up by 20. Timmins isn't getting the start they needed. Queen Elizabeth High School is. We will see liberal substitutions starting immediately for the Queen Elizabeth High School Lions. Nelson finishes for two, goes to the line for one. Obviously has some affectation in his shoulder that he's trying to uh, Work out. remove. <laughs> yeah, obviously a problem with his uh, the skeletal structure there of one sort or other. I'm thinking maybe a torn rotator cuff that could be. Yeah. Let's see if he hits Nelson's the got shot. five already in the second half and still has five. Pretty. You ever? F no, I know you've never had it happen. But uh, you Try get the feeling uh, Timmins feels like they're getting hit with a sledgehammer right now, over and over and over again. I mean, this is uh, a lot of weapons out yeah. there on the floor for the Lions. This uh, really this spread the floor, and they just can't get anything out. See how spread they are. And that's uh, if this were a Walt Disney movie, this would be called The Lion Kings. 24, 18, 16 to go, and uh, it does make the uh, Trojans look uh, like they played a good game last night. Not that I noticed that, because I certainly didn't, being as Yes, wa having watched the game with yeah. one eye open and yeah. one eye. <laughs> Where was the other eye? <laughs> one blue east and one blue west. Two blue eyes, one blue east and one blue west. Oh, nice pass. 
Coach Meyer wants a timeout with a 24-point deficit, and we want to hear what Coach Mike Tanner's got to say to his kids. He's about to go to the championship trophy. Looks like Coach Tanner has turned off his uh, microphone. And uh, timeout's over, so we'll see if we can get that fixed and get back to it in the uh, next timeout. But the long and the short of it is when you've got a 26 point lead with uh, 17 and a half minutes oh, to go, they stretched their halftime lead already. Uh, I don't yeah. think Timmons has scored. They scored By 10, 10 points. points. It's 10 on 10 points, points in the first two and a half minutes of the half here. Uh, good things are not going to happen for the Timmins High School Blues. Today, the Queen Elizabeth Lions will be the first three-time champion of the Irving Oil Hoop Classic. Tossett gets the ball off to uh, Croucher, but Croucher has the ball go out of bounds off his hands. That's probably, oh, the third turnover by uh, QEH this afternoon. Kevin's moving the ball around. Lots of movement. There Terrio nice gets job. it squared up. Too bad Terrio couldn't get the ball going oh. to the hole rather than having to pull back across his body to get it, but uh, symptomatic of the day. <laughs> Trevor Dunbabin picks up the rebound. And the foul goes to, I think, Ian McCray. Yep. Oh, and we're going to get some pressure from QEH. It's fake. And Babin looking for the jumper. Can't find it. Timmons did a good job of keeping yeah. the ball alive last night and converted today when they keep the ball alive, they can't finish. And that's not good when you're playing a team like the QEH Lions where you need every hoop you can get. 60-34, the Rocket Man. There's Gase's quickness. 60-36, down by 24 with 8-16-11 to go. Queenie back into the half court. They certainly, and that's up for three. They haven't missed too many of those, so they missed one. <laughs> nice job by Lorimer. Nice job by Lorimer. Realizing he's going out of bounds and couldn't control the ball as he went out. Found a Queen Elizabeth leg, bounced it off it, and Timmons remains in control of the ball. Perhaps good thing number three that's happened for the Timmons Blues this afternoon. No hoop for Terrio. Got a whack as he came through the key. Ian Fowler is going to call a foul on Tossig. And send Timmons to the baseline to bring the ball inbounds. That's not too often you see that, is it? Haul it Queenie back with a break and haul break. it back out, yeah. We do that every Wednesday night at our games. Of course, there's no such thing as fast breaks. They're breaks. Yeah, we take those for five minutes fast, between the games. That's right, even the fast break is judged by calendar rather than stopwatch. Need the dribble. No. Ooh. Ooh. Our 
chip contact there as the Blues go after the steal and can't find it. Gacy. First foul. Here's a replay of that hard one. Oh, Boom. Oh, 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 pinball wizard. He dropped his shoulder <laughs> to go after the ball just as Nelson broke to go around him and uh, the demolition derby was underway. Lake's going to pick up the foul. That's his first of the afternoon and his team's third of the half, I think. Aggressive defense here suddenly by uh, Timmons has given them more trouble than help. That's three uh, quick fouls, second one in a row on number 12, Joe Gases. Gives him three? It does. Only two, I guess. Two in a row, but two in the game. No count, the hoop. Carvery got slapped outside. Sixty-two, thirty-six, fourteen, oh three. Queenie and their half-court offense certainly working the ball around. Under fifteen on the shot clock, so that's as long as they've gone. I, I suspect in the timeout they were uh, instructed to run some clock because they've got nothing left to prove in this game, and there's no point in making the final of a championship, uh, uh, making the championship oh. game of a, a tournament a, a blowout <laughs> if it isn't already. Here comes Will Carey back in for the Blues, replacing Trevor Dunbabin, who goes to the bench. Coming onto the floor for the Lions, number 15, Chris Wilson, and retiring is number eight, Sean Fleming. Sean Carvery, a nice stroke, even though it didn't go. Nice stroke and it did go. Quick, quick hands. 63, 36, boys. 27 point lead, that's a. Steve Nelson picks up the foul, that's his second. Nice cut by Terrio, and he gets the hoop. Yeah, nice backdoor cut. Nice, nice look by Gases to see that he was there, and a real good job. That's the kind of thing that worked so well for them last night along the baseline with Terrio, and we just haven't seen it today. Carver, he can't find it. Sixty-three, thirty-eight, uh, twelve, fifty-one to go. These are tough games to call, you know. After a while, it uh, gets a little dry. Oh, nice move, Gwyn for him. Terrio slides three. back outside yeah. the line and hits the three. Terrio's got five in the second half to go with six in the first half. Game total of. 
11. Yeah, Today's game is brought to you by the letters C and D and the numbers 6 and 7. 63-41, down to 22. A ah, chance to get it to 20. Ooh. Wouldn't that be as close point? as we've been for a long while. Timmons still going hard. Still playing real hard. Timmons is uh, working at their game because there are, there's going to be another day for them. That's not as it. Nice job. There's yeah. a jumper from the top of the key after a jumper from the corner. He's got 13 now, Terrio does. Timmons is a hard-working team, and, and there's his third foul in uh, probably five minutes for Gasis. Call for the block on Nelson, and Lorimer is going to come in, and Gasis is going to go out. Here's Tosic back in for the Lions. Timmons is going to work hard. They're a young team and a team that... Uh, Young team. Let's not uh, call them a young team. They're 12s and 13s. Yeah. I'm they're, sorry. They're not a young team in comparison to, for his team, they that's, may be young. That's a fair they're comment. They're definitely not that's young compared to anybody else here. Compared to the Queen Lions, E is a that's, young team. That's a fair comment. A young team by the standards that they play in Ontario with grade 13. <laughs> and my point was simply that as the season continues for Coach Meyer, he can use today as a teaching tool and a learning device for the kids. Uh, we've had that discussion before that the Ontario yeah. schools with grade 13 have an advantage of, ooh. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, that was the uh, truck, Car truck going through Carver the wall. Here, let's watch the replay and boom, there it is. <laughs> Carvery tries to go right through the chest of the Timmins player. Love well, those replays. Ian Fowler happens to be having a quick boo with that and says, Sorry, that's guys. not good. Swing it around. Look for a cut from Terrio here somewhere. Eventually, here he comes. Another block. But the point is a tournament like this is not an end in itself for coaches, particularly this early in the season. They're looking to see if they can improve their game, improve the quality of the team play. And uh, Hugh Meyer is going to be happy to go home having learned what he's learned and gone through a pretty tough semifinal last night, and uh, albeit that they uh, took a licking today, they'll learn from it and go on ticking through their uh, off the season. Comments frequently made, why don't we have more teams from Quebec in the tournament? Well, of course, the Quebec school system only goes to grade 11 and uh, makes their teams even younger again than the Ontario schools that come down and play here. Two more for Terrio. He's got nine and a half, 15 in the game. Tossig for two. Hmm, said that before today. He's got 16 in the game, but that's his first of the second half. 67-45, 10 minutes to go. 22-point lead for Queenie. In the clock right down probably hit about a yeah liberal substitutions coming in for Hugh Meyer he takes three players to the bench and three new men out to the floor As scary as it sounds, Norval, I understand QEH isn't going to run away and win the uh, Nova Scotia Provincial Championship without a contest from St. Pat's and a couple of the other schools down there. Good, good. I think uh, 
Somebody told me that uh, not only uh, St. Pat's, but uh, Parkview and Bridgewater are pretty strong teams again this year. Now, I remember Parkview here last year. They were all a lot of 11s and 10s last year. Well, they were. Uh, they're well coached. Parkview was a well coached team. Speaking to a couple of people this week who said, uh, don't assume that QEH is strong as they are. I'll just run away and hide down there because uh, there's some other teams down there that can play. Well, Coach Hugh McDonald, he does a good job at, uh, uh, at uh, St. Pat's. Nice hoop. And I think Frederick and High was down to play QEH uh, a week or so ago, and I understand that was a pretty close game. Timmons with the ball down by 20. Oh, another one. McCray picks up the foul. Again, uh, referee and Fowler says, you saw the screen, you tried to run through it, and we can't allow this. This is not good <laughs> for the game. Let's look at the screen down low. There it is again. Another chance to have a look at that. And uh, you can see with a quick look at it that McCray just tried to run through the screen and hope nobody saw it, and somebody did. Great. Lorimer out front picks up another foul on Nelson. That's three that Gase has got and now one that Lorimer has got because of Nelson's quickness over the last uh, probably seven minutes of the game. He's, uh, he's definitely a tournament all-star, I would think. Good rebound, 68-47 for uh, Queenie up by 21 with uh, 7.48 to go in uh, the 13th annual Irving Oil Hoop Classic uh, Tournament Final. And uh, like we said earlier, one of these teams is going to become a three-time champion. Looking very much like the Queen Elizabeth Lions are the ones. First time less than 20 in a while. Oh, Zimgo. Some extra zip on that pass. Nice finish by McCray. The whole week, Norval, we've had a great time uh, being here to bring these games to people on TV. And I know from the uh, talk around the tournament, everybody's excited, everybody's happy with the way things have gone. The tournament sponsor's very pleased. Uh, tournament organizers, Paul Sullivan and I spoke on uh, Thursday night, he said that Thursday afternoon crowd for the Trimble St. Malachy's game, uh, probably the highlight of the past number of years to have that many people in here for a one o'clock game in the afternoon. Semifinals last night with uh, Harrison Trimble coming through to the semifinals. And uh, pretty satisfying end of the tournament with uh, two pretty solid teams here this afternoon. Yeah. So that's Time five. Out for Will Carey, and he's done for the afternoon with eight points. The, uh, right now, we have had QEH go into bonus, so if they needed any help, they got it. That's the eighth foul on uh, Timmons, so they'll shoot, uh, so QEH will shoot bonus the rest of the afternoon, and six fouls so far on QEH. Timmons is two away from being in bonus. Six minutes and 59 seconds left in the uh, second half of today's game. 70-51, Queen Elizabeth High School Lions over the Timmins Blues.
Croucher scores one of two, and uh, Mike Tanner, I thought he wanted a timeout. I did. I guess probably didn't ask for it a week ago like he has to by the no rules. Norville. 71-51, 654. It's in the interest of the keeping the game moving and fans interested. Travel call by Ian Fowler. We're going to turn the ball over and go the other way. Sean Carvery in for McRae. Tossick finishes with two. That's a nice job. Coast to coast, the scenic route. Back up to 22. Nice cut. Can't finish. Said that before today. Timmons foul called by referee Scott Wood on uh, Trevin Dunbabin. The old 90 fourth. foot foul again. I like the way he shoots his foul shoots shots, Norval. Uh, nice style, gets the ball up over his head, <laughs> cocks those knees. Something like this. Stay tuned for further developments. 24-point <laughs> lead for Queen Elizabeth, and they certainly have... Uh, but with the new two-point convert, Norval, all Timmons needs are three touchdowns and the two-point convert three times. So 24 points, they're not out of it yet. Carvery picks up his second on the back side. Dale DeBroy goes to the line to shoot two. I know the ball got hit pretty hard there. There's been some body down low. Echoing the sentiments of the Queen Elizabeth High School Lions coaching staff, you are, Norval. Terry has shown us a little something different today, Norval, where he's tried to get that uh, outside jumper. He's got some and missed some, but yeah. last night we saw him as a baseline shooter and driving to the hole off the baseline. Today we're getting some outside shooting from him. <laughs> Scott Wood says, you went too fast and didn't put the ball on the floor enough. Mike Stewart, grade 10 player for uh, Quinn Elizabeth. Nice job by DeBroy to get that up on the board and score two, and Timmons is down 22, 75-53. We've got five minutes and 30 seconds of play left in today's championship game of the 13th annual Irving Oil Hoop Classic from SEPS on the University of Moncton campus. If you've just joined us, you've missed a lot this week, and next year don't make the same mistake. That's right. It's a lot more exciting when you're here. Well... Mm-hmm. You might have wanted to go to the hoop with that, Laura. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had a two-on-one and nobody. The nice pass by Gasis and a nice finish by uh, Trevor Dun uh, Dunbabin. The multiple syllables confuses me. Well, now, three more. 
that's your three. That's your slam dunk competition winner from Thursday night, hitting Hit a three. three. Yeah, I think his second of the game. 78-55, 23-point lead for uh, Queenie with about uh, four minutes to go. Cabroy finishes, although he had a little trouble with the dish. He managed to score on it. You're going to get called on that. 40 times out of 40, even if it's a clean check, because officials don't like you coming from the backside, whether they can see it or not. Large scale substitutions for Queen Elizabeth. Got to move those feet, sport, and get around to the front side if you're going to stick your hand in there and think you're not going to get a call. And the uh, substitutions are on both sides of the bench. Ryan Middleton about to see his first action for Timmins. And uh, I think on for his first action, Jeff Williams for Queen Elizabeth, along with a couple of other folks who've been in earlier, uh, and probably the first, uh, well, Sean Fleming was in earlier, I think, and he's, he's back on the floor. Second half trivia, let's uh, finish off our Pizza Hut 14-inch stuffed crust pepperoni pizzas with our number 855-6891. This is the third time that Queen Elizabeth High School has come to this tournament and won. Who coached them the first two times they were down to the uh, SEPS facility on University of Moncton campus and won championships? Uh, this gentleman who's been retired from the QEH coaching staff for a couple of years, longtime football coach and basketball coach at QEH, highly regarded around the basketball and sporting community throughout the Maritimes. Uh, first time Mike Tanner's had the team up here previous years, this gentleman is been here as the coach. We'd like to know the name of the previous QEH coach who twice won tournament championships here. Give us a call at 855-6891 if you know who that gentleman is. Seventy nine fifty seven with uh, two thirty seven to go. Twenty two point lead. Queen Elizabeth with the ball. Little post play. Two points. We've got a winner. It's Andrew Mills of Woodley Street in Moncton who knows that Bob Douglas coached the Queen Elizabeth High School Don Lions. Mills is young fella. That's the that second Make time. Sure your I father think the Mills get family has pizza. won that over the course of the weekend. Well, there's one for us and one for them. More substitutions for Queen Elizabeth. They'll go pretty deep. On comes uh, number six, Dave Nanton. Number 11, uh, Colin Paris is back on. Uh, 15 is on. Uh, that's Chris Wilson. And uh, I think we've seen probably the last substitution of the game. These folks will probably finish out 24-point lead. Um, pretty safe at this point. Timmons at the line shooting bonus. Terrio hits them both. Both teams in bonus for what that may be worth down the line, Norval. Our congratulations to tournament chairman Paul Sullivan and his entire committee for a great job they've done all week, Norval, and a great job they've done over the last oh, 12 nice. months organizing this event and making it the... Uh, hoo 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 Terrio got one from the backside. Making this event the success it's been over the week, not just... Uh, on the floor, but also a financial success. Nice to see the tournament stability that Irving Oil brings and the organizing committee has been able to accomplish. Uh, everybody involved in the tournament's got a lot to be proud of. Terrio reaches with his wrong hand. If he wants to poke a hand in there, should have gone with his left hand on that one. 81-59 with a minute and 30 to go.
Trevor, Trevor Dunbevin has seen his last tournament play for this year. He may be back another time. He's in grade 12, and maybe Timmons will be back when he's in grade 13. One of the exciting things about a win by QEH with all these grade 10s and 11s, they'll probably come back another year to defend their championship, try and win the fourth, and a lot of these kids will be back. Wacko, John Lake gets a hand on an arm, and uh, Coach Hugh Meyer wants a timeout as he uh, wants to talk to his kids with a minute and 29 seconds left. I guess he decided against the timeout. Oh, he probably can't. Yeah, can't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oof. Hardly touched the mess on its way through. Gases can't get to the ball on the uh, far side of the court. Turns it over. Well, the Queen Elizabeth High School Lions have certainly uh, come to this town and taken this tournament by storm. From the first game they played against last year's oh, defending yes. champions where they hammered the Coney Rams to the championship game where they've uh, made a pretty solid Timmins team who won the tournament the two previous years look pretty ordinary. The Queen Elizabeth High School Lions are worthy champions of this tournament. And Norville, a great compliment to Mike Tanner and uh, to themselves for the way they've played. Ooh, no place to go, no place to hide. Well, Norval, with 35 seconds left in this game, it's time to say how much we've enjoyed being here. We've enjoyed having people uh, watch the games. We appreciate your calls on trivia. We appreciate yes. the comments and... Uh, just amazing how many people end up street. watching this. Well, I, I think it is a lot of fun. And it allows people who don't have the uh, opportunity to get out or, or can't be certain of what their schedule is going to be a chance to get a little insight. We particularly want to thank Cable 10 and their staff of volunteers. Ralph Levin, who's produced this all week. It's uh, great to have the camera crews, the technicians, the uh, people who've helped set up. This tournament has been brought to you by the folks at Cable 10 and the job they do, Fundy Cable, to get this tournament out to the community to publicize it, to advertise it, to give the kids the exposure that they get is uh, something that Cable uh, 10 and Fundy Cable, we uh, thank you for. We're uh, not looking for raises or bonuses, Ralph, but we do want you to know how much we appreciate what you folks do and on behalf of all the tournament organizers Pizza and Hut, nothing but. fans out in the community who enjoy the games, we thank you. And as well, it's not a bad idea to say that uh, Dave Murray and his staff of elves and gnomes at Pizza Hut for their uh, help with the trivia contest. We appreciate their sponsorship as well. Oh, is my mic on? I'm sorry, I thought it was off. 86.59 with 20 seconds to go. Nice little hoop by Terrio underneath. We'll be around after the end of the game, which is seven seconds away with uh, trophy presentation and uh, all-stars and tournament awards. We hope you'll stay with us for another 20 minutes or so. There's your winner, the Queen Elizabeth High School Lions of Halifax, Nova Scotia. 86-61 winners over the Timmins Blues. Congratulations to Mike Tanner and his crowd who came up here and played so well from the opening gun. They played the first game of the tournament and played tremendously well. They yeah. played the last game of the tournament and played just as well four days later. Congratulations to Coach Tanner. As well, congratulations to Hugh Meyer and his Timmins Blues who've done a great job. Terrio, one game star for uh, Timmins. And Steve Nelson, the game star for the... Uh, Queen Elizabeth High School Lions. Uh, great game, Norv. A lot of fun today. Uh, yeah. Timmins fell behind early and just didn't have the wheels to catch up with the awfully tough QEH Lions team. And the Lions just kept bringing it to them. Yeah, I was a... Uh, but Timmins to advance to the finals after going one and two in the round robin. I think that credits them. They played exceptionally well. That probably took a lot out of them last night. 
the caliber of play that they had to display against St. Malachi's to get into the final. But let's not take anything away from the Queen Elizabeth High School Lions. They're their first, our first three-time champions, and with their invitation uh, uh, that I'm sure uh, Chairman Paul Sullivan will uh, give to them today, uh, that's going to uh, bring it back to uh, an opportunity for a fourth championship uh, next year. And I already know some of the invitations are out for next year, and uh, I tell you, we've got some exciting teams coming in again next year. Well, we'll have some fun. Uh, hopefully the chance to be back with everybody again next year. This uh, tournament's become part of the uh, uh, expectation people have of the fall and early part of the winter around Moncton, and it's, it's uh, a lot of fun to have the chance to be here, and uh, it's going to be fun to be here for the rest of the afternoon to see who our... Uh, prize winners are our yes. all-star team selections, the uh, scholarship winners, the uh, team award winners, and uh, to see the presentation of the uh, tournament trophy, the uh, keeper trophy for QE8 to take and keep in their uh, their gym or their trophy cabinet in uh, Halifax, and as well the chance to uh, to parade around with the uh, championship trophy that'll stay here in Moncton for. Uh, Recognition Display. of their 1995 win. Join us again in 1996 for what will be the 14th annual Irving Oil Hoop Classic. Thank you all for joining us, for making this as much fun as it is. Let's do it again real soon. See you then.